David Morgan. Uh, this is David Morgan's workshop in the Southern Highlands in New South Wales and he's just very very kindly showing me some of his creations. And so we've got this wonderful thing. That's this is an old one and as you, yeah, you can tell because the latex, that's why I'm trying to get into silicon mm -hmm. um, uh, skins because latex it has a life life a, li a shelf life mm -hmm. and you can see I've cut out all the kind of ro uh, deteriorated parts mm, and what's this stuff called? this is fiberglass mm. um, so yeah he has a, a latex skin and it's quite a large mold I don't have the mold here because it's very bulky and I did the mold originally in plaster you can see here there are sockets that I've created in mm -hmm, the mold in mm -hmm. the fiberglass molding for large eyeballs and the eyeballs are sort of old We've got these sorts of, there's a cast urethane, mm -hmm. and therefore also come out of a silicon mold. So they've been molded in a, a silicon mold like this. Mm -hmm. So you can see that in there. And they, the idea is that they sit in this um, uh, spherical bed, mm -hmm. and that means that they can then be um, turned. So the bed provides. A housing like mm -hmm. like a like like it's sort of like as opposed to building the housing for the the mm -hmm. eye mechanism mm -hmm. it's, mechanically it's, a, yeah. it's just in the mold yeah, it's just part great. of the, the mold of the head armature uh, so there here we go so here's an idea you can kind of get a sense of things like oh yeah so there'd be so that the, move, yeah yeah and I've split the lid, mm -hmm. um, so maybe I would just use Tyvek or mm -hmm. Lycra, mm -hmm. so they have that ability to actually close mm -hmm. the eyelid. And then of course like I experimented with sort of doing up the skin with uh, Velcro. Mm. So would this be, is this a mask or a puppet head? It's a puppet head. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just, I'll just take the skin off so you can get a really good look. So there we go. So um, I had a friend of mine who's a um, mm -hmm. metal fabricator, foundry worker, mm -hmm. and he he has a background in prop building, mm -hmm. and he studied at NIDA. Mm -hmm. He and I designed the armature, mm -hmm. the underlying mechanic, the kind of uh, metal structure that holds the fiberglass head in place. And the idea was that um, yeah, so we've got this hinge that we've created, mm -hmm. welded together, and then it just sort of almost like Richard Hart's pop rivet idea, mm -hmm. but where we've just made it ourselves. And um, it's just all been fixed to an aluminium pole. And then I've fiberglassed this part of, I've just embedded this end mm -hmm. with fiberglass. But it means that then you've got like something to fix to, um, like for example with this, it gives you something to Oh yes. Run cords through yeah. and attach to when you want to move things. Or... There's similarities between this one and, and this, this guy. Well, these are a similar mold. This is actually comes off the same mold, but it's mm -hmm. a different head. So you'd have the same jaw, mm -hmm. but a different head. And that one, of course, has the. And that's quite a. Is old. that a latex? That's skin latex too. But so the underneath old. is quite different. Yeah, I experimented with. Um, paper mache, mache as an alternative to fiberglass, just from the point of view of health and safety. Yeah. He's just showing us um, how he uses a Dremel. This one, what kind of Dremel is this, Dave? Oh, it's an older one. Uh, it'll have the code uh, Model 395. Model 395, and you can see hooked it up with an S hook, yep. and then you've got the cord going. So we've got like Up a flexible arm. And you've got a flexible arm. And then um, that means that you can be, um, there's less um, repetitive strain mm. when you're working. Because it can just hang there. Yep. And then you can kind of, like it's probably better if you're right-handed mm. with this setup. I'm um, left-handed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, maybe I can move this over here, kind of thing, depending, you know. That's so clever, yeah. And um, <laughs> then you can kind of, were <coughs> um, quite unencumbered mm -hmm. and um, once again it's very light mm -hmm. fits in the palm of your hand um, reduces the vibration and the weight because I used to sort of use it at holding the whole mm -hmm. motor in my hand uh, and this was a recommendation from Philip Miller mm. so this one is a mermaid uh, puppet I'm 
creating. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the head, which was originally made out of um, earthenware clay and fired in a kiln. Because uh, at one point I was making like dolls, like different dolls mm -hmm. um, that were kind of like puppet type dolls. But I thought, look, if I want to make use it as a puppet, I better tran trans uh, create uh, something. I like the head, but I, I needed to kind of um, convert it into an, a different material. Yeah. So you can see here, that's the mold, half mm -hmm. of the mold. Uh, I'm just going to run it. I've got to buy more silicon to finish this. Mm -hmm. um, but that's with the and it's got uh, registration keys, so everything goes back together mm -hmm. um, like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm. And you can see, like, if you look here, this was molded like this. Oh, I get it. See, that yeah. goes in here mm -hmm. like that. You can see how I've kind of designed the molding. So, and then once I cast the second half, mm -hmm. I would just box up this side again and complete the second half mm. so you can see and I've also created it so the seam is more sympathetic mm -hmm. when it gets molded so the seam sort of runs not directly down the middle of the mm. the, the puppet head so it's not it's less obvious less the obvious yeah. yeah so it kind of comes cuts across and and hugs say some of the existing detail yeah, great.